top clamp assembly. Okay, so your next assignment, once you're done on modeling the clamp strap, so that'll, that's one separate handout, and you also had a handout to model the hook clamp. Okay, so along with this PDF file, I'm going to provide you with all the loose hardware, the bolts, nuts, washer, knob, resting pad, this long bolt. Okay, so all the loose hardware will be provided. It'll be attached to the email. Okay, so this assignment, we're going to create assemblies inside of a larger assembly. Okay, so we're going to first create this small assembly referred to as the fastener assembly. We have a jam nut, so item number two here on the parts list, we have a jam nut. And we have this swivel foot, the swivel pad, that's item number three. And these are items that I downloaded from uh, Carlane. So carlane.com, uh, it's a place uh, to order uh, hardware for machine shops, metal forming shops, for tool design. There's also McMaster where you can order uh, a hardware and you can also download their 3D models as I did. Same thing with the, the knob and the washer, all these items, and the long bolt. I downloaded them from a car lane and also the resting pad here. Okay, so we're going to make the small assembly. And then we're going to make this second assembly and insert it all inside of this large assembly. It's good practice to uh, label your large assembly with something that stands out and... Uh, one of my previous jobs when I worked for this large aerospace company, we were told to always name the main assembly as the top assembly. So later when you go into your flash drive or on the network and you're looking for your main assembly, there's going to be multiple assemblies and it's going to be difficult to tell which is the main one. So we always labeled our main assembly as the top assembly. In this case, the top clamp assembly. All right, so when you're inserting uh, assemblies inside of an assembly, I want you to think of the main assembly as your backpack. So this is your backpack. And inside your backpack, you have a binder with these items inside of it. You have a second binder with these items uh, inside of it. And finally, you have the clamp strap all by itself and you insert it inside of your backpack okay so think of this as a large as your backpack main assembly with smaller assemblies inside and a clamps clamp strap an individual piece inside of your backpack all right so let's take a look at what we're going to create so at the end of this video i'm going to show you how to put it all together as shown so i want you to notice that we have our clamp strap and this is an individual item. Think of it as a, a ruler inside of its protective clear sleeve. So even though here we have an individual piece, anytime it's inserted into an assembly, it'll come in individually, but with a cover. Think of it as a protective plastic cover. And then now we also have our binders. So think of this as a binder inside of your backpack. So again, we in, the, in our backpack, we have the individual strap. Think of it as a ruler inside of your backpack. Then think of this as a binder. And the binder has these items inside of it. And then we have a second binder with more stuff in it. Okay, so let me go ahead and collapse these. Hit the minus sign, collapse them. So I want you to notice when you're looking at an assembly in, on a Katia tree, I want you to notice the double gears, right? So this is an assembly, obviously. The fastener assembly, that's a, think of it as a binder, that's its own assembly. You can see the double gears. And this is the second binder. You can see the double gears again. Notice how this one, the clamp strap has a red axis. So the red axis tells us that this is not an assembly. This is an individual piece. If we were to go back and open up our binders, you can see the binder is made up of these individual pieces shown with the red axes. Same thing with the second binder. 
This second binder doesn't have any assemblies inside, but it does have individual pieces. All right, so. Okay, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna start from scratch our own assembly. We're gonna insert the clamp strap and then we'll create our individual sub assemblies. Okay, so we'll start from scratch. So I'll go ahead and uh, close this up. Start from scratch. Okay, so you can go to File New, File New, and we can start a product, or go to Start and go to Mechanical Design, Assembly Design. All right, so we are in a new assembly, and you should see the double gears. If you do not see the double gears, this tells us here which uh, workbench we are in. We are in the assembly workbench. If you don't see this icon up here telling us we are in the assembly workbench or product workbench, go to start, mechanical design, assembly. Okay, because there's a good chance you may be in a different uh, workbench, which is common. You may be in the product structure. I think this is the default for Katia. So if you see this icon, product structure like whoa I want to go to uh, assembly product go to start mechanical design assembly design and it'll take us to the assembly slash product workbench all right so we're gonna start by inserting the clamp strap okay so we're gonna insert now anytime you insert an existing component Katia needs to know where you want to insert it. Well, there's only one choice. We want to insert it into our new product. And go to your folder where you downloaded all the hardware. Also, we have your clamp strap and your hook clamp. Okay, so let me go ahead and insert the clamp strap. And open. And there's a clamp strap, so it loaded the clamp strap. Okay. Notice the red axis letting us know it's an individual piece. It's not an assembly. This is an individual piece all by itself. You see the double gear and the red axis. Okay, let me collapse that. Okay, before I continue, let me name this main assembly. I'm gonna right click properties and I'm gonna give it a name. I'll call it the top clamp assembly, okay. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is create the fastener assembly. So think of it as creating a binder. You're going to take a binder that's empty, and you're going to label it fastener assembly. So again, think of it as a binder. We just bought a new binder. It's empty, and we're going to label it fastener assembly or subassembly. Okay, so we're going to buy a new binder. So go to this icon, the double gear with the sheet in the background. Okay, so now it's asking me, if you look down here on the bottom left, it's asking me, select where you want to insert it. Well, I'm going to insert it in my backpack, right? There it is. Okay, so we just inserted our binder. And let's go ahead and label our binder. Right-click properties. And we're going to call it fastener assembly I'm gonna hit apply so you can see it's gonna load that name inside the parentheses so you can see fastener assembly I'm gonna name it this is gonna be your file name when you save it, it'll it'll take the part number in this case fastener assembly so when you save all your work it'll take on this name I'm going to hit apply and you'll see it load in the tree. Apply. Here it is. Now the reason for the instance, let's say uh, you make multiple copies of this binder. Let's say you make 10 binders with the exact same item. An instance name, it'll label the first one fastener assembly point one. And then when you create a or insert a copy of that binder, a second copy, it'll call it fastener assembly point two and so on, point three and point four. So you can have a bunch of these binders make copies if you need them. Obviously we don't, 
But one area where you do see it is when you use the same bolt or nut over and over again in a large assembly. Let's say you use uh, 10 uh, screws, the same size. So it'll come in as screw 0.1, the second one will be screw 0.2 and so on. And they'll be the same part number, just used multiple times. All right. Okay, so currently our binder is empty. All right, so we're going to insert items into this fastener assembly. Let's go back to the PDF. So we're going to insert this jam nut number two. Item number two is the jam nut. And we're going to insert this swivel foot. So this swivels about 15 degrees. This is a threaded shaft. And at the end of the shaft, there's a uh, spherical shape where this is attached to. So the swivel foot is attached to it and it can swivel, I believe it's 15 degrees. This is something that you order from Carling. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, find the jam nut and the and the CL, that's the, the Carlane name. So Carlane item dash 30 dash SSC. So once again, I emailed you along with this PDF, you'll have all this hardware attached to it on the email. Save it onto your flash drive or desktop. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert those items. All right, so we're going to insert the jam nut and that swivel foot. Insert it. Katia's waiting for you to tell it where. Do you want to insert it in the top clamp assembly, the fastener assembly? So fastener assembly. Okay, so go to the folder where you've saved that hardware that I've emailed you. So here's the jam nut. So you can see, I'm going to hold on to the control key so I can select now the swivel foot. There it is. You can see the swivel foot. And hit open, and you'll see it populate inside of our fastener assembly. And three, two, one, open. And there it is. It loaded the jam nut and the swivel foot. Open up the binder, and there they are. Okay, so now we've populated our binder, which is labeled as fastener assembly, with the jam nut and the swivel foot. Now I downloaded this from uh, Carlane. You can download it as a step file, an iGIS file, a SolidWorks, or a CATIA file, and you have uh, more options. One thing uh, I wanted to mention is threads eat up a lot of memory. Now eventually, this thread will go inside of this hole. When you model a hole with threads, we do not model the threads. And the reason is because it eats up a lot of memory. If this shaft was modeled as a straight a cylindrical surface, it would eat up less memory. When you have threads, anything uh, going in a circular or helix shape, anything that's going in a non-linear direction. It eats up a lot of memory, not only the file, but also when you're uh, rotating or moving the part, it eats up a lot of memory and it may slow down your computer. By adding threads to the shaft, this file now is maybe 10 times larger than if, than if it was just a straight surface, smooth surface. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're modeling holes with threads. You do not model the threads. It'll lead up a lot of memory. And you may get in trouble with your supervisor. All right, so now we need to organize this binder. So I'm going to open up the binder on its own window. I'm going to right-click and open it in its own window. I'm going to right-click. And let's look for open in new window. There it is. So we opened up the binder on its own. I'm going to window vertical. We can always go back to the top clamp assembly. If I go to window, go back to top clamp assembly. Or we can go window vertical so we can see both at the same time. There it is. We can see both at the same time. All right. So obviously the jam nut should go up here. We go back to the PDF file, 
there's a jam nut up here with the distance of 130 from the bottom of the swivel pad to the bottom of the jam nut. All right, so let me show you how to move the jam nut. Okay, some of you will probably re prefer to use manipulate. Manipulate. So in this case, we want to move in the Z direction. The Z direction. You can use the J. You can click on the jam nut and just move it. See, if you move it here, it'll also move here. Oh, I'm moving it in the wrong direction. I moved it in the X and the Z direction when I meant to move it in the Y. Move it in the Y direction. Y is going up. I can move this down. All right, so I can also use the compass. Hit OK to exit. So I can use the compass to also move things around. Anytime the compass turns green, that tells me that I can now it tells me it's hanging on to something. In this case, the jam nut. See how it's orange? It's act, it's uh, selected. And I can move it along the vertical. I can so just grab the line, click and hold. So I'm going to click and hold on the mouse to move it in that direction that I select. I can also rotate it by clicking on the arc. So click and hold. You can rotate it. Right? You can also move it or translate it about a plane. So if I want to select this plane, it'll slide it, translate it along that plane. Let's grab this plane. It'll translate it about that plane. Okay, let's go to uh, the top clamp assembly window. Oh, before I do that, if you're done using the compass, don't forget to reset it back into place. You can either... Uh, Drop it at the bottom right corner to reset it. Or go to View, Reset Compass. Watch what happens when I click Reset. Look at the compass in 3, 2, 1, Reset. It resets the compass. If you don't reset it, you may accidentally uh, move things by mistake. You'll forget the compass is still active. And if you click on something, you may end up accidentally moving something that you didn't mean to move. Okay, so don't forget to go to View, Reset Compass once you're done manipulating the items. All right, so let me go to this window. I want to show you that. Let's say you wanted to move the nut, right? And you grab on with the compass, drop it on the item. See, it's green. If you select in space, it'll deselect. When it's gray like this, there's nothing that it's hanging on to. As you can see, I'm moving the compass around, but it's not doing anything. It's not moving an item. It's not green. If I was to select the clamp strap, see it'll move the clamp strap, as you can see. Click in space to deselect. If I want to move the nut, click the nut. Watch what happens when I try and move the nut. It's like, wait a minute, teacher, you're moving the entire binder so it's moving the entire fastener even though i select the the nut it's moving everything in the fastener binder as you can see if you just want to move the nut and only the nut you need to first activate the fastener assembly binder okay so how do i do that you double click and it's going to turn blue double click Oh, I'm in the middle of manipulating. Hit OK. Let me hit Escape. I forgot the compass is active. Hit Escape. Let me reset the compass. View, Reset Compass. Okay, now let me double click on the fastener assembly. Double click again. There it is. Okay, so you can see it's selected. If I click in space to deselect, now it's blue. Now it's telling me this is active. So now if I try and move the jam nut, now I can move it, as you can see. So if you want to move something inside of the fastener assembly, you need to 
activate that assembly and now you can move the individual pieces like the jam nut or if you just want to move the swivel pad select it as you can see select the jam nut you can move that all right if i select the clamp strap notice it's not allowing me to move the clamp strap i would have to go back and double click on the top clamp assembly let me hit escape to deselect anything i need to reset the compass first reset compass now let me double click on the clamps assembly there it is and now i'll be able to move the clamp strap okay let's reset the compass all right so this is one of the things that beginners get frustrated with is hey i'm just trying to move the jam nut i don't want to move the entire sub assembly well don't forget to activate the assembly that it's in and then you'll be able to move it all right so let's go back here let's go to this window okay so i'm going to go ahead and add a constraint okay so let's take a look at constraints Okay, so I'm going to add a coincidence constraint between the hole of the jam nut. Notice there's no uh, threads model, needs up less memory. Okay, so by hovering over a cylindrical shape or conic shape, it'll select the axis of that cone or cylindrical shape. Okay, so selected. If I select the cone shape, here notice so it can be the cone shape or cylindrical shape it'll grab the axis click okay and now we need a distance well let's first update one thing i forgot to uh add is an anchor okay so uh i should anchor the main part or the largest item okay so before adding the coincidence constraint i should have anchored first let's go ahead and add the anchor now so you need to anchor one of the two items, typically the largest item or the main part. So I'm going to anchor the main part. And there it is. You can see the anchor. So that's fixed in space. Okay, so let's hit update. Update, there it is. And now we need that dimension of 130. So we'll do a offset constraint from the bottom of the swivel foot to the bottom of the jam nut. And the dimension is 130. So the PDF tells us that it's 1.30. And OK. OK, and let's see what happens when I hit update. Update. And whoa, wait a minute. The jam nut went in the wrong direction. It went in the opposite direction. So what I need to do is put a minus in front of the 130 constraint so double click i'm gonna put a minus in front of it make it a negative 130 1.30 and okay and update and there it is the jam nut is now in the right spot okay so now that we're done with this one we can move on to the next assembly okay so let's go back to the top clamp assembly Notice how this fastener assembly window is blue. It's letting me know I'm currently working in this window. If I click in this window, if I'm ready to do something in this window, click in space, and you'll see it turn. It will it will turn a dark blue. Okay, I'm gonna double click on this window to maximize it, or you can just hit on this maximize button. I'm gonna double click on the frame. It'll maximize it. We can always go back to our fastener assembly, All right? Let's go to our top assembly. All right, so now we're going to create our next assembly. Okay, so let's create a new assembly. Katia wants to know where are you going to insert it? Are you going to insert it in this small assembly? Nope, we're going to insert it in this top assembly. So there's our new uh, binder. Let me collapse this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and name it. Right click properties. And this is called the end assembly. So name it in the instance name and also name it as the part number and assembly and hit OK. And you'll see it in the tree. And again, notice it doesn't have a little red axis. 
So if it doesn't show, if it's double gear with no red axis, then it's an assembly. So these two are assemblies. This one has a double gear with the red axis. It's just telling me it's a component. It's just an individual piece. It's just a clamp strap inside of its uh, see-through sleeve or protective sleeve. Okay, let's collapse it. Okay, so now we're going to insert the rest of the hardware. Okay, so inside of this end assembly or sub-assembly, we have the rest of the hardware, the knob, the washer, the bushing, the resting pad with the little swivel pad, and the long bolt, okay? And the hook clamp that you modeled. So let's go ahead and insert all those items. All right, so we're gonna now insert existing item. Insert existing item into this end assembly. So Katia is waiting for you to tell it where you're gonna insert these new existing items. Click. Okay, so go to the folder where you have all this hardware that I've emailed you. Okay, so we need the bushing. I'm gonna hold on to the control key, not the jam nut. That was in the other assembly. The hand knob, the washer, the long socket head cap screw, not the swivel foot. And let's see, I'm gonna insert that little resting uh, swivel pad and don't forget the hook clamp. I think I got all the items. And open. It's gonna load them in there. There they are, all loaded in place. Hit the plus sign. You can see all the items here. All right, so it's hard to work with all these items on top of each other, all clashing with each other. So I'm gonna open this up in its own window, right click. And we're going to open up the end assembly in its own window. Open a new window. There it is. Okay, so notice how things are on top of each other. So I'm going to use either manipulate or the compass. And I'm going to use the compass because I'm trying to encourage you to use the compass to move things around. It's just faster. So let me move the knob over. Okay, so all you have to do is click on the line if you just want to move it in that direction. Now I'm going to click on the bushing. Click on the edge of the compass, move it outward. Click on the hook clamp, I'm going to move it up. Left mouse click and drag it up. There's the washer, I'll just move it over to the right. And the rest, the re swivel pad, the resting pad. Okay, there they are. Okay, so I'm gonna start by anchoring our main part. Let me reset our compass, view, reset compass. By the way, another way I mentioned already is to mention it already is to just drop and it'll reset it. It's just safer if you do it from here, view, reset compass, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna start by anchoring the main part, which is the hook clamp. So let's put an anchor to the hook clamp, there it is. Okay, so let's see what attaches to the hook clamp. Let's go back to our PDF file. So the hook clamp, we have this resting pad and we have this long bolt. It's a lot clearer here in the section view. We have the long bolt that goes inside of the counterboard hole of the hook clamp. And we have this resting pad with the threaded shaft. All right, so now on the handout, when you model this hook clamp, this had it as a plain hole. It's actually a threaded hole. I believe it's a quarter 20 thread. So that was a mistake I made on the handout. This is actually a threaded hole, not a simple plain hole. But again, we don't model threads. It eats up a lot of memory. We would have modeled it as a plain hole either way. All right, so let's go ahead and attach the resting pad. So we're gonna use coincidence. Hover over it until you see an axis light up. If an axis doesn't light up, you may have to zoom in. And there it is, we see the axis light up, click. And let's hover inside the hole, click, there it is. Now there's a coincidence between the two, an axial coincidence. Now let's add a contact, bottom of the swivel foot, top of the hook clamp, and let's hit update. There it is, and you can see the constraints here. 
collapse it. All right, now we need to have the bolt. Let's use coincidence to go axis. Let's rotate this to axis. This goes inside the counterboard hole. And then we're gonna put a constraint between the bottom of the head of the bolt. Put a contact constraint from the bottom of the bolt to the bottom of the counterboard hole. There it is, and we're gonna hit update. Okay, so hit update, and there it is. We have the socket head cap screw inside the counterboard hole. All right, so now, let's see what's next. Okay, now we're gonna attach this simple sleeve or bushing. Okay, so this sleeve is gonna attach around the hook clamp. So you can see, here's the sleeve or bushing. Okay, so let's put a coincidence between the bushing or sleeve and the hook clamp. And now we're gonna put a contact constraint from the bottom of the bushing to this top surface and update. There it is. Okay, and finally we need to attach, attach the knob to the top of the threads here. So let's put a coincidence between the knob and the bolt. Okay, and then we have the washer that attaches here to the knob. Okay, so let's put a coincidence. If you have trouble with the axis again, if the axis doesn't light up, zoom in. So we have a coincidence between the axis of the washer and the knob, and a contact constraint between the washer and the knob. Oh, it looks like it didn't create it. Let me try it again. I didn't see it here. Once again, contact between the washer, and there it is. Okay, it did work. Okay, now we're gonna hit update in three, two, one, update. And there it is, we have our knob in line with the bolt, the washer making contact with the knob. Now we need a distance here. Let's go take a look at the PDF. So here's the knob, the washer, and the bottom of the washer, there's an offset from the bottom of the washer to the top of the bushing or sleeve of 0.23. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that offset constraint from the bottom of the washer to the top of the sleeve or bushing. And the offset is 0.23 and okay. And let's go ahead and update. All right, so everything seems to be in place. Okay, so now let's go over to the top clamp assembly. So go to window, top clamp assembly. And there it, is. there it is, we're almost there. Let's go ahead and collapse this. Okay, so now we're ready to assemble it all together. So again, this is all going into our backpack, the top clamp assembly. All right, so we're gonna start by first anchoring the main part, which is the clamp strap. That's the largest part, it's the main part. So let's go ahead and add a anchor constraint. All right, so, uh, even though we've added an anchor constraint, I just wanted to show you, Katia still allows you to move it. I think SolidWorks will not allow you to move it once you anchor it. Now you're allowed to move it, but you can anchor it back in place by updating. You can see it wants to update. There it is, it updates back to its anchored position. All right, so now let's insert the small assemblies into the holes. Okay, so we have the fastener assembly it goes into this hole, this little hole. And then we have the end assembly that goes inside of the end hole, which is the counter, this larger counterboard hole. Okay, let's take care of the little one first. Okay, so we're gonna put a coincidence constraint between the swivel foot and make sure the top clamp assembly is active. Okay, so if this is not blue, double click on it before you add constraints. 
We're constraining at the top assembly level now. Okay, so I'm going to put a constraint between the swivel foot and the hole. Now, let me uh, take a step back. Let me hit escape. Let me show you what happens if, let's say, this fastener assembly was active. I double click. Now, let's try and put a, a constraint between the hole and the end assembly, and let's see what happens. Coincidence from the swivel foot to the hole. Notice it doesn't let me pick the hole, and it's because we are in the wrong assembly. Okay, so we need to close it. It's giving us a warning. I'm going to hit Escape. So I need to double click at the top assembly. And now it will let me add a coincidence between these two items. Or I should say between the strap and the end assembly. Fastener assembly, my mistake. Okay, so coincidence from the axis of the foot to the axis of the hole. There it is. And now we're going to add a contact constraint between the surface of the nut and the top surface of the... So see how it works now? It's allowing us to pick both because we are in the correct assembly. Notice it's blue. And click the top surface. Now even though the coincidence is between the jam nut and the clamp strap, we did it at the top assembly level, so it's going to move the entire assembly, the entire uh, faster assembly, and locate it with respect to the hole. And update, 3, 2, 1, update. There it is. Okay, now let's do the next one. Again, make sure this one is blue. Top assembly is active. Okay, so I click in space to deselect. So now let's put a coincidence between the bushing. Now even though we're picking the bushing, again because we're at the top assembly, it's going to include the entire assembly. It'll move the entire assembly to this counterboard hole. So again, even though the constraint is between the counterboard hole and the bushing, since we're doing it at the top assembly level, it'll move the entire thing over. And now we need a contact constraint between the washer, so bottom of the washer, to the top of the clamp strap. Okay, so let's do a contact constraint, bottom of the washer, to top of the clamp strap. And let's update, three, two, one, update, and there it is. We're almost there. Okay, the only thing left is to line up our swivel pad with the swivel foot. Okay, I'm going to use an angular constraint. We haven't used angular constraints yet in this uh, assembly. So I'm going to use angular constraints. So I'm going to put an angular constraint between the surface, or I can pick the edge, the surface of the clamp strap. And I need a flat surface or axis. I cannot pick a round surface on an angular constraint. I need to either pick this flat surface or this edge to make it work. Okay, so let me click in space to deselect or hit escape on the keyboard. Okay, so let's do an angular constraint between this surface. Again, I could have picked the edge. And I can pick the edge here or the surface. I'll pick the edge, it doesn't matter. There it is, we're adding an angular constraint. And as you can see, it defaults, it actually uh, detects that there's an angle of 180 degrees between the two. Okay, so I need to change that angle. Let me try 90 degrees. I want to rotate it 90 degrees. And OK. And I'm going to hit update. And update, 3, 2, 1, update. Whoa, it went in the wrong direction. So 90 degrees didn't work, so I'm going to rotate it 180. So it's 90 plus 180 is 270. So double click on the angular constraint, type in 270 and OK. And let's go ahead and update. It's going to rotate it, hopefully, at the right angle. And there it is. It did work. 
Okay, that's it. Okay, so this clamp assembly, its purpose is for this to be bolted onto an end table at a workshop. So you'll have a bolt bolting onto a table. So this will bolt onto a table. And an item will slide in between the swivel pad and the swivel foot. Uh, it can be a, a piece of aluminum, aluminum plate, or aluminum bar that maybe you need to work on. Maybe you need to uh, prime it or something. You slide it in here between these two items and then you can tighten it with the knob. Okay, so that's the purpose or the function of this assembly, in case you were wondering. All right, now, when you email this to me and I open it, I'm going to check that you constrained it correctly. And the way to check is by exploding it. Okay, so let me introduce you to the explode command. So this is the explode command. So it's going to send things flying into space. Okay, so this is my way to check that you constrained everything correctly. So let's go ahead and explode everything. And I recommend that you do it also before you uh, save and email it to me. I'm going to explode everything, all levels. I'm going to explode everything. I'm going to hit OK. And it's giving me a warning. Are you sure? Because this, this may cause permanent damage, right? So I'm going to say yes because I'm confident I did constrain everything correctly. Yes. Okay, so as you can see, everything flew into space. So if I hit update, everything should go back to its correct position in three, two, one, and update. And it does, everything went back to its correct spot. If something was off, let's say the knob was still flying out in space, that, mean, that tells you that the knob and maybe the washer is missing a constraint. So if something is fl flying in space, you need to go in and add a constraint to that item. All right, so we're done. By the way, if I wanted to reset my uh, toolbars back to where they go, I can always right click on any icon. Now let me hit escape to deselect. Go to customize. Go to the toolbars tab and I can restore position. It'll restore all my toolbars into the default position. So restore position, okay. And it'll throw everything back in place. Oh, this happens to be an extra toolbar, which I don't need. And close, all right. Okay, so now let's save everything. Okay, so you probably did learn this in CAT 31. We're gonna go to File, Save Management. Okay, so file save management. Notice how it says open. So it tells us that all we did was open up all this hardware or items that we, we had previously modeled and saved. Okay, so these are just open items. We didn't make any changes. And these are new items. So the top clamp assembly is a new item, the fastener assembly, the end assembly. We know because it says new and there's no location for them yet because we have not saved these files. All right, so let me cancel. I want to modify something real quick. I'm going to modify the color of the clamp strap. Again, I suggest that uh, you guys add a color to your, to your uh, parts just so the parts stand out on their own. Right click properties. I'm going to go to graphic. Oh, I'm in the wrong level. One second. I'm going to click on the part body. Right click properties. Here's the color. Let's say I change it from tan to, let's pick a different color. Something that's not being used yet. I'll just pick one of the primary colors here. Let's pick a darker brown. There it is. And OK. OK, the reason I'm just changing the colors so you can see what happens when I go to File, Save, Management. And we're going to take a look at the clamp strap. File, Save, Management. I want you to notice that it recognized that the clamp strap was modified. Even though we just simply changed the color, it noticed that something was modified, so it's going to save it 
Once we're done save, uh, doing our save management and hit OK, it'll save that new color we've added to it. So any changes, whether you added a hole, a chamfer, a fillet, any changes you made, it'll tell you here, hey, by the way, you modified this file. So it's going to be saved once you're done saving here in save management. Okay, so instead of having to go in and save every item individually, all you have to do is go to the top assembly. As you can see, here's a preview of the top assembly. Here's the fastener assembly, the end assembly, the clamp strap, the jam nut, and so on. Just go to the top assembly. Okay, so the top assembly. So on the list here, go to the top assembly. If you save the top assembly, it'll save everything inside of it. Okay, so now we're going to go save as. If you want to save it in your folder where you have your hardware, go for it. I'm going to save it in a brand new folder. Okay, so I'm going to save this top clamp assembly in a new folder on my desktop. Save as. So I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it a clamp assembly. Okay, I'm going to open it. And I'm going to save my top clamp assembly inside of this new folder, clamp assembly. I'm going to save it. And there it is. It's telling me, hey, I'm saving your top clamp assembly in this new folder you just created on your desktop clamp assembly folder. And then it's also going to save your fastener assembly and your end assembly. Now notice we still have our hardware, in this case in my flash drive. In this other folder now if I want I can make copies of the hardware and place it in my newest uh, clamp assembly folder on my desktop by hitting propagate watch what happens when I hit propagate it's gonna make copies of the hardware it'll leave the original ones there but it's gonna make copies of them of this hardware and place it in my new assembly folder clamp assembly folder watch when I hit propagate in three two one propagate so it's going to send copies of all the hardware into this new clamp assembly folder on the desktop. Once I hit OK, then it'll ex execute the action of save. Right now it hasn't saved it yet. We still have to hit OK. OK, so everything looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And it's making copies into that new folder and saving the new files into that new folder. OK, so let me go to my desktop. And you'll see on the desktop this new folder called Clamp Assembly. And if I go inside of it, you'll see everything. You'll see the top clamp assembly, the faster assembly, the end assembly, and all the hardware, including the clamp strap and the hook clamp. So everything is in this folder. Okay, one mistake that some of you will make, and it's a rookie mistake, a beginner's mistake, which is very common, is once you're done with your clamp assembly you go to your email and you attach the top clamp assembly so when I open up so some of you will only just attach your top clamp assembly file and email it to me the problem is when I open it it's not gonna load all these items when you only send me the top clamp, clamp assembly by itself it's like opening an empty backpack. It will There will be a list of all the items, but it'll say, hey, uh, somebody forgot to load them. Include them in the email, right? So to avoid having to uh, attach all these items into the uh, email, which that's an option, you can attach each single item to the email and you can email it to me. That's the long way of doing it. It's one option. So you would have to send me every single item in the backpack, including the smaller assemblies, everything. So as to not have to attach everything one at a time, or all these items, to the email, let me close this. You can right-click and compress the folder. Okay, so I'm going to right-click and I'm going to send to and compress it. Think of it as a suitcase where you're jamming all your clothes and personal items. You're forcing it into this, into this uh, luggage bag. And you're going to sit on it and zip it, right? You're trying to compress it so it makes it easier to transport, in this case, to email. Okay, so right-click on the folder and compress it, uh, depending if you're using Windows or a Mac. 
If you're using Windows, it'll compress it as a zip folder. In Mac, if it doesn't uh, give you the option to compress it as a zip, it'll compress it as a .rar uh, file. And for Windows, it'll compress it as a .zip file, .zip. Okay, so I'm going to compress it, and you're going to see it's going to create a new folder. 3, 2, 1, compress it. And here it is. So it created a duplicate folder, and it compressed everything in, the, in there, zipped it up, and it'll, it'll take up less memory. Okay, notice this one. Look at the size of this file, 3.67. And this file is 1.21. It's a smaller file. So I want you to email me this compressed folder once you're done. All right, so let's go back. Okay, so this is the end of the Top Clamp Assembly video. End of video.